Uh, we'll uh, see the presentation by Incibe and we'll have also success cases and good practice. Thank you very much. Thank you to the Diputación, the regional government, and the um, Vice Minister of uh, Economy and Economic Promotion. Uh, we are now going to present INCIBE. So we've uh, listened to Luigi. He's explained what uh, Europe is going to do and in the next few um, months regarding cybersecurity. We are, in fact, are a national institute. The, the initial name was INTECO. Do you know INTECO? Several people. INCIBE, do you know this name? Yes, National Institute. This means that with the new management, we have a better dissemination. And one of the most important missions for us since 2006 is, is to disseminate the mission of INCIBE at national uh, and international level. INCIBE was born as INTECO. It, we had a general focus. We were more general. We were more technology-based institutes. We had uh, a section on cybersecurity, but we, have, we had other interests. But in 2012, we focused uh, more specifically on cybersecurity. And that's why we changed our name in CIBE in 2014. This name reflects our specific uh, focus on cybersecurity. So INCIBE has already 12 years of existence. These are the three main axes in INCIBE, in three sections. We have services, preventive and proactive services, and reactive services that we provide. This is the most popular part, and it's quite well known. It's not just the CERT inside, but here we are on the CERT part, what is currently called CERT-C, the security for the industry. And here we deal with incidents in the industry world. So we give solutions to incidents in a reactive way, but we also provide with other services, awareness, training. These are, are part of the preventive services. Another important uh, focus for us is uh, promotion of talent uh, and promotion of uh, industry. We are now working very hard on this. And the third axis, or the third section in INCIBE, is focusing on a more horizontal uh, level, giving support to the two other axes. Here we develop different technologies to deal with the intelligence that CERCI receives, or to develop applications that, in fact, are services that are uh, provided uh, to uh, citizens and companies at national level. What's important here is that there's an agreement, CNPIC. It's the National Center for Protection of Infrastructures and Cybersecurity, so that's a new name. There's an agreement between two agencies in two different ministries. CNPIC, we are the uh, internal affairs, and then we have an agreement with the um, another ministry for tourism and uh, digital energy. S CERT C is an, a body that is operated and coordinated by CNPIC and INCIBE. Let's see what are our main actions. I spoke about services, and there's a part of CERTC which deals with the more, most reactive part of protection. Here you see a typical CERT, but not only. We have the reactive part. Something is happening to me. How can you help me? 
what about this uh, security incident? What can you do for me? What is the potential solution? So we are now managing lots of incidents. And uh, apart for uh, citizens, companies, and critical operators, we have also academia, Red Iris, and the affiliated uh, members to Red, the Iris network in Spain. Uh, this is just for, for national purposes in Spain. We are 100 people working in, in CIBE, and we have to give response and, uh, and solutions to many types of incidents. For instance, there's a, p a person having a problem in his PC at home. There's a ransomware or any type of incident. Those incidents, uh, we can also cater for that. We have individual support at national level. Let's see the figures later on. There's uh, the preventive side in CERTSI. We have different uh, types of specialized content here. It's more about awareness, um, early alert, cybersecurity warnings. Here we have uh, guidelines for security. The, um, the most recent technologies are being uh, disseminated, state-of-the-art technologies, in fact for cybersecurity. We also compile the news, most recent news. It's quite uh, user-friendly so that people can easily understand. Sometimes we need to explain more so that the information gets to all citizens in a more uh, simple way. That's this part. This is a proactive uh, support. And another part, it's the National Scheme for Industrial Security and for also National Infrastructures. We're going to change the name very soon, and I'm going to give you more detail about this uh, action. I still have 13 minutes. I, I hope I, I'll have enough time for this. In this part, we're now defining uh, three, being, three big sections or blocks, in essence, the idea is to reinforce and um, improve cybersecurity in critical and strategic infrastructures. But this could be also applied in the future to all type of types of companies and businesses. We'll see uh, m more detail about this uh, drawing. What happens? So these are the incidents that we've managed. In CERTSI, we've resolved this number of incidents uh, up to now. We've seen the four different parts, citizens and companies. That's the most important uh, block. Critical operators. These are strategic operators in Spain who've signed a confidentiality agreement within CIBE. And they receive a special treatment on our part because they should have, have a bigger weight than other bodies or agencies, because they're critical and because they're, the incidents uh, could be very, very serious to them. And the academia, that's the, the third part. Statistics and figures in 2016. Malware, basically. This is the terminology, including virus, trojans, spyware, worms. Everything is included in malware. This is incident number one, and we do manage this through CERTC. What is our, What are the implications? There's a commitment. Uh, the machine is compromised. This malware, this malicious code is uh, being executed in a machine, and the machine is compromised. This, mean, this means that there's a, a human error, or more usually, in fact, the machine is compromised because there is a vulnerability. So th there is a mach there's machine compromise, that's for real, and there's no permission for that uh, intrusion, and the, the malicious code has infected the machine. Well, that's to sum up what happens in this type of incidents. This is the number 
uh, for last year, 885 incidents that were uh, managed for uh, um, critical operators. 80, more than 80 percent uh, increase with regard to um, 2016, so an important increase. These statistics are useful, but there are sectors which are highly dependent on technology. These sectors are going to suffer more. They're going to report more vulnerabilities, of course. Banking, energy, telcos, and transportation companies. Typologies of incidents. Well, this is aligned with the most typical incidents at national level. So malware, non -author unauthorized accesses, intrusion, intrusions and um, distributed denial of service, basically. This is something that we uh, got yesterday. This is the alert level and history. This indicator, you have it in the CERT, in CERTSI's web. It's CERTSI.es. You see the map of Spain with values. I'd like to show you the Basque Country. And the levels of alert, these are statistics. These are threats that have been detected in the last four, 24 hours. These are uh, compromised uh, machines, uh, which are part of a botnet around San Sebastian. Look, the numbers. Look at the numbers, 90 detected threats. So you have to be aware of, of the fact that there are a lot of alerts. and. Threats are all over the place, and they're closer than you think. Fifty percent or more of your equipment have been uh, suffering from um, incidents, security incidents in the Basque Country, so you've been affected by this, and this is last year. And this is the cyber intelligence that INCIBI receives out of those alerts. This is for bots, but we have other types of threats. This is just for bots. This is the most frequent um, threat. This was captured around San Sebastian yesterday. So you see that the threats are there, out there. Most of them are bots. You know Configure? Anybody knows Configure? OK. So I think your technical level are, is quite high. So Configure uh, is, has a dependence on older machines. So the, uh, the repository of these uh, botnet, in fact, some of the machines are using XP and other operating systems that are quite obsolete. So we can reach those conclusions. These are old machines. So we can see that the, the PCs that are out there need uh, a real and critical out updating. Uh, in the industrial sector now, vulnerabilities, other types of services that uh, is provided by CERTSI. I have just seven minutes left. Well, at the end of the day, here, we we'll try to alert, and send warnings for citizens, for companies, and, with a, and to a more professional profile. We have three types of um, security warnings. So compile all the information that is needed, and we inform the, our customers about vulnerabilities. What about vulnerabilities in the industrial sector? And this is the most important part for us here. It's growing. The level of vulnerability is growing because these vulnerabilities are reported by uh, manufacturers, by um, private researchers and other agencies and bodies. You see that vulnerabilities n never stop in July. Well, normally, uh, people are on holidays in July, but you see the number of vulnerabilities. A lot of them have been reported. In the last, uh, well, the second part of the year, we had more and more vulnerabilities. These are sectors and vulnerabilities per sectors. This is a national, a national level, national figures. Normally, we don't publish uh, 
the vulnerabilities that affect China. This could, could affect China, but in fact, if we are only report those which affect Spain. What about incidents? Now here we're talking about vulnerabilities, and this doesn't mean that these uh, vulnerabilities are not being exploited, but the risk is there. What are the sectors that are more, most affected? Those who have more digital, uh, more digitally equipped, they have more vulnerabilities because they are technology dependent. So this uh, blue line is corresponds to other sectors, other industries. The first individual line, the, the sector that has more vulnerabilities here, is for energy. The energy world is a sector that is uh, extensive. It depends on technology a lot. It doesn't mean it's more it's more insecure than other sectors in our industry, but we can easily detect incidents. We can detect errors and uh, failures in specific applications, and it's easier to detect those. We have 2016 on the left, 2017 on the right. You can see the comparison. So, so code execution and uh, denial of service, it, that, these are two are on top. This, uh, this is the comparison with uh, regard to last year, the code execution. If you uh, know about this, what are the implications? Well, you can normally you wouldn't be able to execute a specific type of code. If you can, if you can do it, it means that there's a software that is facing a situation, an unexpected situation. The software doesn't know how to solve this, and the attacker can execute code because it. He takes advantage of that situation because your software doesn't know how to respond. And we also uh, see technologies that look for vulnerabilities. We have more and more technologies that look and find vulnerabilities because, in fact, we have more money and more resources uh, to try and find vulnerabilities. It's quite normal. And the more uh, resources we have to find vulnerabilities, the more we really find at the end of the day. And here we have um, systems that report vulnerabilities. These are mostly deployed in our, in our country. Siemens, Rockwell, and others are well deployed in our country. More services. Relevant news to make people aware of these um, incidents. So we uh, gather all the news. 2017 has been the year of ransomware. CTR, another ransomware. And security networks with fil filtering of sensitive data and intrusions, and we'll have more and more of those, especially for delicate and security data content. I won't elaborate on this. And then something that is now growing is the IoT, the Internet of Things, and connected connected devices. It's easier, in fact, to uh, take advantage of vulnerabilities that are well known and they're not patched, for instance, in cameras and routers and de decos, but we'll have a greater availability here of data so that the cyber attacker can use that equipment that is already compromised because the machines are, well, these devices are, are online day, uh, night and day. So they can send spam, they do DDoS uh, attacks because the devices are permanently online. What can we do with all this? What about the statistics? We have a series of services available. Uh, the previous speakers spoke about training, awareness. And in INSIBE, we cover uh, the whole nation. And this is always well received. 
but we need other, uh, the, the contribution of other cybersecurity centers. We need their contributions because we can't do everything. So we have the co collaboration with other centers. I have no more time, but a very interesting resource, and it's, it's quite recent. In fact, we call them uh, user-friendly itineraries. We use comics and games. No more time. So th thanks to these games and these uh, comics, we will uh, be able to make people aware in SMEs. I have no time to here to speak about ENZI, but if you want more information about ENZI, please contact me, and I'll be very, I'll be very glad to give you all the information. Thank you very much for your attention. This is the last screen with um, the contact data. Thank you. Thank you.